What is up, my friends? I want to thank you for stopping by. You got Sturk here coming at you with my top five-ish new Pokemon moves that I would add to the franchise. We'll go into why I said five-ish here in a few minutes. Something I think we can all agree on, though, is that moves are one of the most important parts of the Pokemon series. Whether you're playing the main games, competitive, side games, watching the anime, reading the manga, playing the TCG, whatever it is, you know that moves are everywhere. It's what makes a Pokemon great or not great half the time. Do they have good coverage? Do they have powerful special moves they can learn? Like Ficious Rend, like Population Bomb, or Thunder Armor, which Ash, which Ash just made up because why not? Defied the laws of science, but it was still fun for us, so we enjoyed watching that. But going into things, we can just all agree that moves are something that are really special. Every new generation, I can't wait to see what type of moves are we going to get. Are they going to be powerful? Are they going to be fun? Are they going to have great animations? So let's just go ahead and hop in. Uh, coming in at number five-ish, we have two here, uh, but I didn't want to make it a top six because that's what my man Emperor Cubone does. He's the goat. I'm not getting in his way. So at five-ish, we've got two different moves. We have Mystic Strike and Arcane Strike. You can probably kind of guess what types these are going to be, and you've probably heard Strike before when it comes to Pokemon moves. You've probably heard of the move Smart Strike. So these are very similar. The user strikes furiously and precisely with a pointed edge. This move avoids all accuracy checks and contact effects. Now, I would add that to Smart Strike as well. Smart Strike already never misses, but avoiding contact effects is really important. If you're facing a Mon that has Rough Skin, or is holding a Rocky Helmet, or if you're facing a Mon that has Static or Flame Body, avoiding the contact effects means even though you hit them physically and you make contact, you don't have to worry about the added effects. That would really help these moves out. Uh, Mystic Strike is a Fairy-type move. Dragon is the Arcane Strike. I said that really weird. That's okay, I'm not taking it out. This is a physical move, 70 base power, never misses. I added that it could be a high crit move, kind of just to make it more fun. I don't think it really needs to be. But you never see Pokemon run Smart Strike. You likely probably would expect that you would never see them run Mystic or Arcane Strike. But I do think if you add avoiding contact effects and a possibility of high crit, you'd start seeing them used a little more, right? No one uses Smart Strike over Iron Head. Iron Head is stronger and you can flinch. Actually, though, when you think about it, well, fairy types, physical fairy types, they have a rough time. If you know of the move Play Rough, you know it's a 90% accuracy move. And you also know if you've played, if it's 90%, it's not 90%. Feels a lot more like 50%. People who love Mimikyu and Tinkaton and Zacian and Grand Bull, we've all missed our shares of Play Roughs over the years, and we want to rip our hair out. Mystic Strike, you don't have to worry about it missing. You do lose 20 base power, but if you get up a Swords Dance or have a good enough attack stat, I think we could live with losing the power if we know we're going to hit. Something like Arcane Strike, why would you run that over Dragon Claw? Dragon Claw would be stronger. One, Dragon Claw has no added secondary effects. This would have multiple. Two, not all dragons learn Dragon Claw, weirdly enough. And you don't always want to run Outrage because then you get locked into it. A Fairy or Steel may come in, then you're in trouble. If you run something like Arcane Strike, you do lose some base power, obviously. But once again, if you're hitting hard enough, you can kind of take away some of the base power. You can still make it work. I do think these would have some really cool animations. I always like how Smart Strike looked. Um, obviously, a lot of fairies would be learning this. I think it would be cool for Mystic Strike and Arcane Strike to also be used by non-fairy or dragon-type mons. Imagine something like an Escavalier using Mystic Strike to hit fighting types. Or imagine Phalanx for some reason with its pointy head hitting with Arcane Strike and having a dragon move just for the fun of it. I think it would be a lot of fun to see. I do think that they'd be a cool addition to the series. But obviously, these are probably the weakest entries on the video and that's okay because coming in at number four we have one that i personally think would be a lot of fun and that is the move inverse power now if you're like me you remember this trainer in pokemon x and y that would uh essentially reverse the type matchups for your battle that you'd be about to play i remember the first time going up against that i've always been someone who feels like they know type matchups really well but once you have them flipped it really kind of starts to throw you off you're like wait a second Fighting re poison resists fighting, so now is fighting super effective against poison? Yep, that's how it works. I think it'd be cool for psychic types to be able to use this. Maybe not a ton of them, 
but I think just random mons, like I think Meowstic being able to do it um, with Prankster could be kind of cool, or if you have something like Hypno or Mr. Mime that aren't necessarily very strong, this makes them a cool support mon, right? You're a Mr. Mime about to get hit by a Steel-type move, you click Inverse Power and all of a sudden uh, you resist it. Now you might, it might need to have negative priority like Trick Room the more I think about it, but I think that'd be okay. It would last for five turns, just like something like Trick Room or Magic Room, and obviously it's not an attacking move. It does nothing other than once you click it, type matchups are changed for five turns. I think it'd be a lot of fun in a playthrough. I think it'd even be kind of fun and competitive. I don't know how often it would be used. I think it would drive people crazy, but I do think we would all have some fun with it. And that's what matters at the end of the day. Here's the description up on the screen. At least I think so. My computer's being buggy. Had to cut down my PowerPoint quite a bit. But here we've got number three. And coming in at number three, we have the move Turbo Shock. Now, if you see my boy Morpico on the screen, you know he's already got ways to boost his speed. Why do you need to be this blinding fast as an electric type when you already have things like Jolteon and Regieleki and Heliolisk that are just super fast as is? Do they really need more speed? But sometimes the opponent's able to boost their speed and they become faster than you. Or what if you're something like a Magnazone or an Electros that's really not that fast? It'd be nice for electric types to have some priority that they're able to use. Um, we have a lot of priority moves as is that are plus one priority that are 40 base power, such as Quick Attack or Aqua Jet or Mach Punch or Vacuum Wave, and there's more and more. And I would think we should keep adding more. To, uh, each of the types would be kind of fun to see. Like I said, a lot of electric types are fast anyway, but I do think a lot of special electric types could really make some good use out of this. Obviously, something like Morpico or Luxray might be a little bit out of luck being more physical attackers, but a lot of electric types are special attackers, so it made a little bit more sense to me. This says the user shocks the opponent with blinding speed, and it has plus one priority. 100% accuracy. You get a lot of use out of it. I think it'd be a lot of fun. Maybe even something like Kling Kling or Cobalion that learn electric type moves anyway would be able to use this, even though it wouldn't be a same type attack bonus. I still think we'd have a lot of fun with it. Electric's my favorite type. I wanted to show it some love in this video. Now coming in at number two, the last two might be a little bit controversial. This one being Rocket Launcher. I can already see people kind of hating the move just because like, oh, it's based on a weapon and it has the name of the weapon. I get it, it's on the nose, but it kind of just seems like it would make sense. I think a lot of steel types could make great use of this. Imagine something like Aggron that has a really high attack hitting with a hulking 120 base power move. Um, or even something like a Bastiodon that has like almost no attack but a lot of defense. It can tank some hits, then hit you with something like Rocket Launcher. Even though its attack is bad, it would have a very high base power move. This does receive 1 4th recoil, and it may also leave the target with a burn. And here's where it's really going to get controversial because when you get those 30% added effects, People don't always like that, right? We didn't like that Scott, Scald could burn 30% of the time, so it got taken out of the game because it was so centralizing in singles, right? Something like Lava Plume gets that 30% burn, or Discharge with its 30% paralysis. That's something we know as hacks. When something happens that we don't really expect it to happen and it can really kind of mess with us, it makes people mad. But if you also think about it, Rocket Launcher has an 80% accuracy. You have a chance to move. You are taking recoil. There are setbacks to this move, so I think it would be a cool thing. Um, I think it would be a cool addition to the game. Uh, we have moves like Wave Crash that were added. That's a water type move that takes recoil. It's like Double Edge being 120 base power. Um, I actually think I meant to make Rocket Launcher like 130 base power. So what happens is I basically made Rocket Launcher a steel type version of the move Head Smash, which mons like Tyrantrum and Rampardos and uh, Rhyperior are able to learn. Not a whole lot can learn it though. I think also Archeops and I don't know if anything else can. It's not super widespread, so I don't know how widespread this would be either. Um, but anyway, the, uh, the user launches a fragment of metal. I know a lot of mons don't have something that could shoot out a rocket launcher like a Blastoise, which I think would be cool to learn it. But I think if they're able to fire off a piece of their metal like that, it could have the same type of effect. I just think it'd be a lot of fun. 
Um, but I believe Head Smash is a 140 base power move. I made this one a little bit weaker since it did have the 30% burn rate. Maybe that's why I dropped it down to 120. Either way, it would be a very powerful steel type move. Um, the most powerful physical one, I believe, because I think something like Iron Tail is 100 base power. This being decently accurate, but also not having that much PP, I think it just ends up being pretty balanced out. We all get mad when we get those 30% burns, but since not many things would learn this, I think it would be a lot of fun, and I think it would fit with a lot of Pokemon's designs. And that brings us to our number one move, which is definitely more controversial, but at the same time, the more I think about it, I don't know how strong it would actually be. The move is called Muscle Memory. Now, let me just start off by saying if this were an ability, it would be busted. But I'll explain why I don't think the move would be busted. But if any of you do anything like martial arts or play sports, you know how important muscle memory is. Being able to just react without really having to think about it and be able to think about other things is a really important thing. For example, you see Michael Jordan here shooting a free throw with his eyes closed. He shot so many free throws, he knew where the goal was going to be not being able to see it. He knew how much power he was going to need to be able to do it. I played center in football. We had to be able to do something similar. Can you snap the ball? Well, without thinking about it, because you're really actually thinking about picking up a blocker or something like that. Or in martial arts, seeing someone's foot coming in to kick you in the face, you kind of instinctively know how and where to move to be able to counter an attack. So, I, I don't know if this is the best type of uh, name for this, but I think it fits well. Essentially, this move would be anytime you boost your stat, if you click the move muscle memory afterward, or I think even beforehand would be fine, once you switch out and switch back in, you will still have those stat boosts. Now you see why it could be broken. Because if this were an ability, and Amon used Bulk Up or Dragon Dance or Calm Mind, switched out and came back in, that would be busted. It would still have those stat boosts. That's part of um, the downside of running a stat boosting move. If I click Dragon Dance with the Salamence and a Fairy type comes in, when I switch out and come back in, the stat boosts are gone. If you click Muscle Memory, though, you would still have these said stat boosts. And I think that would be a cool thing because, one, I don't see this being a very widespread move, right? A few fighting types get it. A few non-fighting types get it. I think something like Mian Xiao being able to learn this would make sense. Um, I think Kung Fu Panda would kind of make sense with uh, Pangoro being able to get it. Um, I think also, though, non-fighting types um, being able to get this. Maybe not something super busted like a pseudo-legendary dragon type, but mons that are like decently powerful, it'd be kind of cool them being able to click bulk up, switch out, come back in, and have these switches. Now, you do have to run a move slot for this. You do have to click the move on top of being able to click the stat boosting move. So I think to an extent this would be pretty balanced, and I think there's even a potential for if you clicked muscle memory, would negative effects happen? Like if you clicked close combat, if your defense and special defense dropped, then you clicked muscle memory and went back in, um, say you'd done that after clicking bulk up, would you also remember the negative stat boosts or stat decreases? I think that'd be cool either way. I think it'd be a lot of fun. I'd be very interested to see if it shakes up competitive at all or if it's one of those moves that's very cool in theory and then just never gets used. What I would assume would happen though if this were real is a few mons would get it, one or two would be good with it, the rest would be trash with it, and then someday they'd make it the ability of a legendary and it would be absolutely busted. So anyway, I think it'd be a lot of fun. I like the thought of muscle memory working its way in um, to physical activity and a Pokemon battle is a definitely physical activity. So I think it could be kind of fun. Uh, but anyway, I've rambled on long enough. Let's hear your thoughts. What are some moves you would like to add? Please comment below, uh, DM me. Let's just talk about it. Let's have some fun talking about Pokemon. If you think you'd like to have one of yours featured in a video, then maybe I'll make a part two and I'll be able to put some, uh, some of my followers or friends' opinions in here. I have a few other ideas of my own. And if there's any other type of video you'd like to see, please do let me know. I can't guarantee I'll be able to do it because my computer's slow. Right now, my screen's flashing, and I don't even know what I'm seeing. Sometimes that just happens in the middle of videos. That's okay. I still have fun making these. I plan to make more coming soon. I want to thank you for stopping by. I want to thank you for watching through to the end of this video, and I want you to have yourself a great night. Peace.